there! Welcome back to Beauty Bee and welcome to my seasonal favorites video! Seems kind of wild that it, we're already ready for the spring into summer favorites, but here we are! Here it is! I tend to keep these favorites videos a bit more aimed towards techniques or types of products rather than specific product recommendations, so if that sounds interesting, first of all, I hope you'll subscribe. Second of all, let's keep on keeping on and get into the video. So one thing that I have been just absolutely loving recently is doing my nails. I've been doing my nails between two and three times a week, uh, minimum. I think sometimes it's been more like three to five times a week. Really for the past few months at this point, I would say probably about six months I've been doing my nails super, super regularly. And I think a good chunk of why I've been able to do that, especially when I'm messing around with glitters, is because I started using a peel off base coat. I'm not wearing it like under my polish today. This is essentially a, a creme polish with some very, very small black flakies in it. They're all the same formula, just different colors. Before I purchased a peel-off base coat, I would, you know, paint my nails using glitter and then I would just let the polish sit there for like a week and a half, looking worse and worse all the time until I finally like accepted defeat and was willing to sit down for 20 minutes scrubbing at my nails with nail polish remover. And I've got to say, my nails are in pretty good shape, I think, for how often I switch my polish. I think a good chunk of that is that I, you know, take my multivitamins, I eat a relatively balanced diet, but I think that this is partially uh, to credit for that as well because I'm not, you know, scrubbing at my nails with acetone for 20 minutes three times a week the way I might be otherwise. Um, the one that I have been really liking is the Oont Ready for Takeoff Peelable Base Coat. This is one that allows you to really take off the nail polish in just a couple of pieces. I think that it is the one that Christine at Simply Nail Logical used to use for her peel porn videos before she started her own brand and had her own peel off base coat. Um, but, but I don't think that it is really specific to this one. I also have one that was more intended for gel manicures that I've been using and it's a little bit more sticky. It doesn't come off as neatly in like one or two pieces, but it still gets the job done and I have no strong preference between the two. I have very much had a color scheme of eyeshadow that I've been really, really drawn to. I've been liking a little bit more of a neutral eye again. For quite a while there I was really into something that was a little bit more colorful, especially like blues and pinks and greens, sort of pastel shimmery shades. Not in like an early 2000s frosty way, though sometimes. More in a um, just sort of like an ethereal pretty look. But the last couple months I've been so drawn to these cooler neutrals, I didn't even realize just how much until I looked at these two palettes that I purchased pretty recently. The first one I have a video up on my channel about. This is the Lorac Mini Pro palette in Mystic Oak. Here is what that looks like. This is beautiful. I think it's stunning. I bought this as a birthday present for myself in April and I've used it quite a bit. I think it's gorgeous. Now, like a few weeks ago, I was shopping on BoxyCharm, their Mega Drop shop, for the month of May, and they have this Natasha Denona five pan for like $12, and I could not resist. This is the Ayana palette, and first of all, beautiful. Second of all, clearly my type because these are so so similar it's ridiculous i mean there are the two matte shades 
true. There is nothing that's exactly equivalent to this more mid-tone, cool tone brown in the Lorac palette, but the two shimmers also have very similar shades in Lorac. So, you know, if you're looking at this Natasha Denona palette and you were not able to grab it during the Mega Drop Shop sale, I don't know if they actually sell this on the Natasha Denona website. If they do, it would be 40 odd dollars. I would strongly recommend uh, looking at the $16 Lorac palette because it will very much get the job done and the formula, the texture on these is beautiful. But just these types of colors have really been drawing me in. I like that with this kind of palette, I can do an almost no makeup makeup look, you know, really focus in on these lighter shades, maybe add a little bit of a deeper brown at my lash line, maybe pop a little bit of a shimmery shade right in the center of my lid or in my inner corner. I like that I can do that or I can go you know, super deep and smoky. I could go just with this glam green shade is what I'm thinking this is called and the super dark brown. And I mean, that would be just a beautiful, beautiful smoky eye. And I think that these types of color palettes are great for wearing with brighter lips, which is definitely something that I find myself more drawn to in spring and summer. I love bright reds and bright pinks. I just find that they are not always the easiest to match with more colorful eye looks. That can go into what I feel on me looks like clown territory really, really quickly. Something a little bit more neutral and for me a cooler neutral is often quite a bit easier to wear with a brighter lip color. I think that's actually it for straight makeup. So now let's talk about a skincare favorite. I have been so much better about doing my skincare routine than I ever have been the last couple of months and if we were filming this video any other day I could look at, I could show you my skin and be like, I mean, look how clear things are. It's looking better than ever. But of course, because I was going to film this video today, I've got this giant spot that's not going away. That was just using more pleasant to apply products. So using a spray toner instead of one that I put on a cotton round and using a uh, serum that is creamy and comes in a pretty bottle, I'm just a lot more likely to actually go through with a full skincare routine. And one of the products that I'm just so, so impressed with has been this Neutrogena sunscreen. This was not expensive. I want to say this was like $14 at Target and I think I got it on some additional small sale. But this is their Invisible Daily Defense Face Serum Sunscreen. It's SPF 60 plus, which I think is great. And let me pump out just a little bit. It's this soft orange color and it's very thin feeling. It does have a little bit of oiliness to it. I've noticed that more in the past few weeks. So. I mean, this sits right in front of my window. I wonder if it's separating just a little bit because of how hot it can get in my room if that window is open, or I guess if the, the blinds aren't drawn. But this sinks in super nicely. It's really easy to apply makeup on top of it, even if you don't you know, add a primer on top or powder things down. I find that makeup wears really nicely over this. I've always needed to wear sunscreen, especially in the summer months, if I'm going to be outside. However, in the past few months, I've realized that even if I'm going to be outside for very little time, that I do really need to be wearing sunscreen. And having one that feels pretty light on my skin has definitely gotten me to wear sunscreen every day the way I really should have been this whole time. Um, I've always traditionally struggled a little bit 
with breakouts. I've not been as big of a concern for me the last couple of years, but especially through my teen years and really through college in the summer, I would have a really bad time with sunscreen clogging my pores and causing a lot of breakouts. This gives me no problems and I'm really, really impressed with that. I don't know how much of that is specific to this Neutrogena brand though because I was actually originally drawn to this product because I tried a serum sunscreen from a K-Beauty brand. I can't remember which brand it was but I got it just as a sample with a Yes Style order. Used it, loved it, uh, was actually looking to purchase that same sunscreen from Yes Style but decided to give this Neutrogena one a go because it's available at, you know, Target and Ulta, places where I regularly shop and was going to get to me a lot faster than ordering from Yes Style. So I would definitely check out some serum sunscreens if you're looking for something lightweight and relatively inexpensive. I've been quite impressed with them thus far. Now transitioning to a couple of fashion favorites, I've been loving a little bit of a smaller earring. Of course, like with, with uh, my spot here, I didn't think to wear something that reflected my favorite today, but I have always liked dangly earrings. I've generally preferred those to studs, though I've been a little bit more open to studs the last couple years. But in general, something around this size has been a favorite for me basically since I got my ears pierced. Um, I think I wore studs mostly through like middle school, but since high school, something around this size has been pretty common for me. But these last couple of months, having still a dangly earring, or at least one that's not a true stud, but something that's just a little bit smaller, has really appealed to me. I pulled three that I feel I've actually worn quite a bit over the last few months. The first are these little gold hoops that have this turquoise bead. I mean, it's not real tur turquoise or real gold, but you know, kind of this idea. I like this tiny little pop of blue. I think that is cute with a lot of different looks. I really like wearing this with like a taupey shirt. I think this little pop of blue is just so fun. These are another one that I've been wearing quite a bit. These are actually even a little bit smaller than those blue ones, but they're just a purple stone with some gold dangling pieces. I really don't like super small studs like this would be if it was missing these dangly elements. Um, I just feel that they don't look proportionate on my face, but this little dangling element, that little bit of movement, I feel adds a lot to an outfit and I really have been liking these. But then my absolute favorite the past few months have been these earrings. I got these through a Fab Fit Fun sale of all places and they're just these tiny little, I think they're supposed to be oranges, though I'm not 100% sure on that, but they have this leaf that attaches to the earlobe and then this dangly hoop and I just think they're so stinking cute. I love the little bit of whimsy that they add. I like that these are just a plain gold so they can go with a huge variety of what I wear and they're just really fun. Don't know what to say. You've probably seen them in a lot of videos over the past couple months actually. I've been wearing these so so often. And then my last like proper favorite is a type of skirt. Now I'm calling these like LuLaRoe-ish skirts even though one of the ones I have pulled out to show you I don't think it's from LuLaRoe at all. What brand is this? This is from Tranquility by Colorado Clothing. 
no idea. I, I'm sure that I bought all of these secondhand. I've certainly never purchased anything from LuLaRoe, and I don't even know where you could buy Colorado clothing. So the type of skirt that I'm talking about is relatively short. These both come to right about my knee, but they are very, very stretchy, and they have this elastic waistband to them. I mean, I have owned this particular skirt through um, about a 45 pound like weight range and it has fit me the entire time. Yes, it's been a little bit tighter or a little bit looser, but at all of those points it has fit me appropriately. And I find these just so comfortable to wear when it starts getting warmer out. I don't like shorts. I don't like my legs and for some reason, even though this might be the same length as a pair of shorts, I feel like I'm not as out there and as on display in a skirt like this as I do in say a pair of little denim shorts. I tend to go for something that has a little bit of an A-line to it. You can tell, I think just from how I'm holding this, that the waist on this is the smallest point and then it continues to flare out pretty much all the way to the bottom. I am quite bottom heavy. I can wear, you know, an extra small small on the top generally, but I am more like a medium to sometimes a large on the bottom. So this type of garment really works for me because it fits with my body shape. It doesn't you know, gape at the waist or look way too tight in the hips the way a lot of items do. And I find that there is, you know, freedom of movement, it's cool, and I think it just looks more like an outfit than a lot of shorts do. I mean, I can wear this with like a black graphic t-shirt. I have worn this with several different black graphic t-shirts, and it looks like an outfit, it looks pulled together, but it's still easy, it's still casual, and it's still cute. And here is the other skirt that I pulled. I know that I said LuLaRoe-ish skirts, and I think this one actually is from LuLaRoe. Yes. So I would not recommend purchasing from LuLaRoe for a variety of different reasons. Some MLM related and some just quality related. These are like $35 skirts through LuLaRoe or something like that. And uh, no, <laughs> this is like a $10 skirt. And that's about what you will find it for at thrift stores. So that's how I've purchased really the majority of my clothing, but especially these skirts have all come from Goodwill or ThreadUp. But I was saying LuLaRoe-ish skirts because I meant, you know, prints and the stretch that these items have. I want to be clear that I, I'm not co-signing on a lot of the prints that they come, come out with, or at least have come out with. Um, I like things that are a little bit on the more tame side for LuLaRoe. I mean, these are some asymmetric polka dots. I have one that's like paisley. Things that are a little bit more subtle for LuLaRoe but still have some personality to them. Those are the kinds of skirts that I've really been loving. And then we always wrap up these videos with a goal. In the this last season my goal was to get more use out of my palettes, really film some palette specific content. So like palette bingos, two looks, one palette reviews, etc. And I think I did an okay job of that. However, it just took me a lot more time than I thought it would to work through all of my palettes. So I'm still in the midst of that. I think that is what I'm going to continue to work on over these next few months. And the big piece for me, in order to finish that goal of working through all those palettes, making videos about them, really getting good use out of them, I need to not bring more in. So 
my goal for the next three months is to not bring in any additional eye palettes. Is it going to work? I think so. I think that I will behave myself. And you are more than welcome to call me out if I do not, because goodness knows, sometimes I need that kind of accountability. So I think that about wraps up my favorites video for the month. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please let me know what you've been loving over the past season. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks again for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you have not already. And I hope that I will see you all next time. Bye.